welcome everyone on today's ECOSB webinar uh, focused on high availability setup. My name is Draslav Stejska and I'm working as a maintenance specialist uh, in projects in energetics uh, such as ECOSB, OPDE and PCR. And since year uh, 22, I'm um, also a QSP technical team leader. So, hello once more. My name is Daniel Yanota, and since 2021, I'm an analyst of QSP development. Okay, let's have a look on today's agenda. Uh, firstly, uh, we will uh, show you some news about uh, the latest spring release of QSP. And then we will continue uh, with the plan scope, uh, which is high availability. So we will take a look on the prioritizities and general information about the high availability. Uh, we will take a look how to configure a QSP client for external database, for application cluster, and we will show you how to integrate uh, with the QSP application cluster. Uh, the part of this workshop is also practical demonstration of, of the integration on the high availability setup. So let's start with the information about uh, new features for the latest Spring release 23. Uh, so there was quite a major change uh, in Java. Uh, we have upgraded from Java 11 to Java 17, which is connected also with the libraries upgrade. Uh, there was change operation, operation system support. We have added support for Oracle Linux 8 and 9, and also for Red Hat uh, 9. And uh, we removed support for Red Hat 7 and also CentOS 7 and 8. A support was removed. So if you are using uh, these older uh, versions of the operating system, you will need to create a new virtual machine or plan upgrade of the operating system before uh, upgrading to the latest spring release of EcoSP. Uh, there was also a uh, changed database support a bit. Uh, we have added support for MS SQL 2019 and uh, we removed support for MS SQL 5.7 and MS SQL 2017. There were also compatibility changes. Uh, uh, compatibility with ECP3 uh, was removed in the latest version of the ECSP. And also, the spring release is not compatible with the ECP version 4.7.2 and EDX 1.8.2 and lower. So this is something uh, which you should consider uh, when upgrading to the a new version uh, before, uh, because some other participants in the network may be used using the older version and then uh, you would not able to connect to their uh, EGSP component. This is because of TLS, uh, the TLS version was uh, changed in, in the latest version or support for the TLS. Uh, quite a major uh, change uh, in this release is also that uh, Kubernetes deployment support was added for all EGSP components. So, you uh, are able to establish the whole EcoSP environment uh, using the Kubernetes Helm chart. So this is uh, included in the installation package. Uh, there were added external authentication for web services. And also ECP broker was extended by Prometheus metrics. Uh, Part of the release is also easier update of, of uh, network configuration. Uh, so you should be able to migrate to the new format of network configuration easier. 
So this is about the latest release. Not sure if you have any question, maybe you can ask now. And if not, uh, then we will continue with the plant topic, uh, which is high availability. So firstly, all the provided information is available in EcoSP documentation. When speaking about uh, ECP high availability, uh, you can use ECP system design and chapter high availability and clustering and ECP installation guide uh, and chapter installation in high availability mode. For EDX setup, and there is EDX technical design and chapter HA deployment of toolbox and EDX installation guide where the information provided in chapter installation in high availability mode. Okay, and let's start with the requirements. So we will start with the database. Uh, the most important is support for external database or requirement for the external database uh, because the default database Apache Derby doesn't support uh, cluster. So uh, if you want to establish the application cluster, you need to firstly install external database and then you can establish the application cluster. The supported databases for EcoSP are Oracle 19C, MS SQL Server 2019, MySQL Server 8, and PostgreSQL 13. There might be also a specific configuration uh, uh, based on choosing database system. Like for example, for MySQL, um, there is a required lowercase table name to be enabled and max L packet uh, configured to 100 megabytes. Uh, anyway, all this information is available in the installation guide. So uh, when you choose the database, just make sure that you will follow the installation guide and uh, set up uh, set up uh, the database as required. OK, let's continue uh, with the hardware requirements. So besides the shared database, uh, you will need to uh, establish the application cluster uh, as well, which means that you need to replicate the same hardware setup per EcoSP application node. Uh, for EDX cluster, uh, you need to establish shared file system. Uh, the recommended shared file system is NFS. You will need the shared file system or also if you will choose the file system shared folder as the integration channel for using the file interface for uploading and downloading the messages. And there is optional usage of the load balancer, uh, uh, which could be, for instance, Apache HTTP or Nginx, and this is intended to be used for access to the graphical user interface or for a web service access on a single address. Uh, optionally, you can use also active MQ cluster. Uh, by default, there's embedded active MQ in the XSP components, but you can use also the external cluster. Uh, so uh, if you want to uh, have the external external active MQ or external broker, you need uh, additional hardware setup for this as well. Uh, regarding the uh, requirements on the sizing, uh, the sizing uh, for the cluster is the same as uh, for the single node installation, with the only difference uh, that you need to create a separate uh, machine per uh, EcoSP node. Of course, uh, we can recommend the usage of virtual machines, which can be easily resized when more resources is necessary. Uh, of course, these uh, hardware requirements, uh, which are also stated in the installation guides, uh, are uh, 
uh, let's say some 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 generic some some recommended but the real hardware requirements may depend on on message traffic and on the expected load on your echo has been down HSP supports uh, HA deployment and clustering on the application level. As I mentioned, you need to use external database. And internal message broker must be then configured in a failover setup. So details about this configuration will be provided later by my colleague. As I mentioned, you can use the load balancer, but this is optional because this is only for uh, let's say uh, uh, creating single point of access to the graphical user interface, but the web interface will work also uh, without the cluster because the setup of EcoSP is active active. So you can use any of your EcoSP components uh, to uh, access the messages. And as I mentioned, if you want uh, to use EDX toolbox uh, in the cluster, you need to establish a shared file system, as well if you want to use FSSF as the integration channel. On the first schema, okay. uh, how I do? Oh, sorry. It the first schema, uh, you can see uh, the easiest, easiest cluster of the applications. There are two ECP applications and one external, uh, external database. Uh, as I mentioned, the EcoSB cluster is installed as active active, so uh, both uh, ECP components are active at, at the one moment. When one component goes down, then the system will continue to the function because the second ECP endpoint will be still, still able to handle the messaging. So this is kind of uh, the easiest setup uh, for EcoSP. You can see that uh, every uh, EcoSP component has its own IP address, so you can use multiple IP addresses to access the ECP endpoint. On the, on the next uh, illustration, you can see uh, fully clustered deployment, uh, which consists uh, of application cluster on the left side. Uh, on the right side, you can see database cluster because uh, all ECOSP component supports also database cluster uh, configuration. So your ECP instance is connected to the DB cluster uh, setup. And if needed, you can use also external active MQ broker uh, in order uh, to divide uh, the, this messaging part from the application logic. Uh, on the next illustration, uh, there is demonstrated uh, high availability deployment for EDX toolbox. So uh, this is a bit more complex schema, uh, which consists of uh, data tire on the right side. And you can see there is a database. This can be also a database cluster. For EDX, uh, there is required shared file system for DMS. And in the middle, you can see application tire, which consists of the application servers. And these EDX applications are connected via NQPS to the ECP tire. There can be, uh, again, the ECP cluster installed. Uh, on the top of the illustration, you can see load balancer tire. Uh, however, this is an optional for the load balancing of web requests. And on the left side, you can see that uh, to access the web application of the EDX toolbox, you can use either 
business application, or it can be used by users, by the web interface, uh, or when speaking about a business application, you can connect your business application to, to the NQPS failover or NQP failover to your EDX toolbox, as well as you can connect your business application to the shared file system and use the FSSF uh, folder, the shared folder. Uh, on the bottom of the illustration, you can see also the poly interface, uh, which is optional. Uh, and you can see the external poly interface uh, in order to uh, uh, provide your pool files via, uh, via a, separate, a separate network, or via the, for instance, Apache HTTP server. And then the other clients can download it uh, via this external pool interface. Uh, same as for FSSF, the pool interface needs to be connected to this DMS shared file system uh, of the EDX toolbox. So this is complex schema of the Echo SP, uh, high availability setup. And this is all from the more theoretical part. The second part will be uh, related more on uh, practical demonstrations. So if you have any questions regarding uh, this theory, uh, you can ask now. Otherwise, we will continue uh, with some demonstrations and uh, configuration setup examples. Okay, if there is no question for now, I will move forward to Daniel. Thank you. Um, so, let's start with the configuration of EcoSP client or uh, usage of external database. Uh, the first step is uh, setting the Spring Profiles Active property to uh, ECP or EDX-HA. Uh, this will uh, this will change the let's say mode to use the external database. By default, there is uh, ECP dash non HA, and if you leave it with not non HA, uh, the default embedded derby database will be created after the initial startup. Uh, so, if you want to use the external database, you would need to change this, this property. Uh, this is also a common common mistake. Uh, it's really easy to to miss or forgot to change this, and then it make problems. So uh, we can check it uh, in the in the configuration. So you can see the, the property and its value uh, ECP HA, and the same for uh, EDX toolbox. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Also, maybe I can mention right now that uh, we have prepared a basic environment. So, uh, two nodes for uh, ECP endpoint and two nodes for uh, EDX toolbox. They are using the same uh, configuration, just with uh, the local instance ID different. But uh, I will get there. Later. So yeah, so the first step is is changing is changing this this property. Uh, then another part of the configuration of external database is uh, the use uh, to, to configure the usage of the database itself. So uh, you would need to specify the database URL. Uh, together with with some uh, driver class name, uh, username and password for the database schema, and uh, validation query to ensure the the connectivity, and also uh, the local instance ID, which needs to be unique uh, across the whole cluster. Uh, as we can see on this on the screenshot, uh, the multi-line connection string can be used as well. 
regarding the SCP endpoint, uh, specifically that it's internal broker, it is recommended to use a different database scan schema. Uh, you can use the same, but it's recommended to make it different. So uh, you can check it again uh, into configuration of environment. And here you can see the ECPDD URL uh, with a connection string to the database, which contains uh, the protocol. Uh, in this case, we are using uh, MySQL database, so MariaDB. The IP address and the port of the uh, database server, then the schema, and then some uh, connection parameters, which may differ uh, according to your database setup. And then you can see the username and password, uh, validation query, uh, the local instance ID, which, as I already mentioned, uh, needs to be unique across the whole cluster. And then also the driver. And here the same thing just for the internal broker. So let's move to the next slide. And uh, this whole configuration is described in TCP installation guide, uh, chapter external databases, and in chapter external database in case of PDX installation guide, so everything is covered there. So let's move to the next topic, which is the configuration of EquestV client uh, application cluster, so the cluster itself. Uh, as I already mentioned, uh, the configuration of the second node uh, needs to be the same, or it's recommended to be the same, uh, except the local instance ID, which must be unique uh, within within the cluster. And also, in case of uh, ECP endpoint, the internal broker IP uh, should be changed to the four zeros or the server IP, so the next node uh, is able to to communicate with the, with the first one. So we can. Uh, that as well. In this case, uh, here you can see the internal broker host property is set to four zeros. Uh, regarding the registration of ECP endpoint uh, in in the cluster, uh, the process is. Pretty simple, and it's the same as for the standard deployment. Just in this case, you would need to leave the second node stop. So we will register the first node uh, after the registration process is done and the endpoint is successfully synchronized. You can then uh, start the second node, uh, and uh, the certificates will be will be downloaded from the database by the second node. So. Okay, nothing special there. So now uh, let's uh, take a look on the integration uh, with EquoSP application cluster. Uh, firstly, uh, we can integrate via IMQP or IMQPS, uh, which uh, yeah, with SSL or without SSL, and there you would need uh, the failover connection, as Drums Leveler already mentioned. So we would need to set the internal programs to some to the zeros ideally. And then for the internal program URLs on the ECP endpoint, we will use the failover uh, failover syntax. Again, check it within the Configuration again here. So here you can see the internal broker URLs, and here is the failover. So the first URL here is uh, the first node, and then the second node. So in case that, uh, or in case uh, all the time, only one of the nodes is has the master status, 
and therefore uh, its uh, internal broker is running and can be used. So failover make uh, easier to to choose which one uh, will be used in case of messaging, etc. And the same applies also for the index toolbox. Just in this case, there is uh, one property more. Uh, there is one property URL property for uh, EDX broker, so the broker of the EDX toolbox, which must have the failover, and then also the one for uh, ECP broker URL, where you can have failover in case you are using uh, the cluster deployment also on the ECP uh, layer. Let's check it here as well. And here we can see that the EDX broker URL is in failover. Again, uh, there are two nodes, so two addresses. And therefore, ECP as well, again, failover with two nodes. Right now, we can maybe check the, the status of the, the nodes, which one is master, right? which one is not to show you that only the one node uh, is, is running the internal broker. So, I will connect to the server of the first node and uh, by the net start dash loop, uh, I will grab some of the two. Uh, we can see that there is uh, used port uh, 6672, which is currently configured for uh, EDX toolbox. So on this server, uh, the EDX toolbox node is, is master and therefore its uh, internal broker is currently running. And I do the same thing on second server, just copy the command. You can see here uh, the 5672 port, which is used by ECP endpoint. So the ECP uh, master node is on, on this server. Yeah, and regarding the MQPS security, then for authentication, the JKS key store uh, together with password is used. Uh, in this case, on our environment, we are sharing the same uh, out key store uh, within both uh, ECP nodes. Uh, this is not exactly necessary to do that like this, but we've done it. And you can see the, the key store location, which is using a data directory uh, variable. And this variable is defined uh, right here. So it's currently pointing to our shared directory and some folder specified for the, for the endpoint. And also the same, uh, same path we are using on EDX toolbox. So we are so reusing uh, the key store from the endpoint. And uh, this way it's, it's making it a little bit easier um, because you are just reusing that one file. So if you can do it, this is, I think, uh, pretty handy. And also, we are using the same key for the for the internal broker of of the index toolbox itself. Also, here you can see the the password for the connection uh, to the to the ECP endpoint. Uh, we are interested in more and uh, want more information about those, the MPS security. You can check the ECP administration guide, uh, chapter how to secure MQB API, or EDX administration guide, chapters uh, how to connect to the secure ECP endpoint over MQBS, or uh, how to connect a uh, business application over MQBS. Let's 
So let's move to the next slide, and that's, that will be the integration of EQSP application cluster uh, via FSSF. Uh, as Rahoslav already mentioned, the shared storage for the FSSF is needed. And in case of uh, EDX, it's, it is also needed for DMS. Uh, the recommended technology for uh, the shared storage is NFS. And uh, the important thing that only one node, uh, the master node, can operate uh, with these files. The database block mechanism is, is used to coordinate the, the nodes. So basically, uh, you can see that we have uh, two, two nodes of the, of the FSP and the you know, broker, and they are using the same shared file system. Uh, we can check that. We can check uh, the shared folder. So here the shared there, and there are two folders for uh, both uh, ECP endpoint and ECP toolbox. So if you move to uh, EDX toolbox, because uh, here is a little bit more uh, interesting, here we have the DMS, and here you can see that there are actually two folders. Uh, for one for each uh, EDX node. So in this case, two uh, with these uh, local instance IDs. And here you can see that there are some, some files uh, with the DMS. For SSF, uh, we, can, we can send some message. file so I was I will be sending the, the file to Cheetah and uh, using the FSF EDX uh, as a message type. Yeah the message was consumed by the master node and we can check that graphic user interface and then you can see that the message was sent and received. Uh, you can check also the receiver. Yeah, and then here you can see it as well. The message was uh, received from, from Tiger. So that will be uh, the LSF. You know, on the on the ECP endpoint, it works uh, the same way. So, yeah. Uh, and yeah, here, uh, yeah, maybe I maybe I can also also show you the configuration of the of the FSSF in in EDX toolbox. So I will open the. EDX YML file, and you can see that I'm using the FS endpoint, and uh, it's configured to the shared uh, shared directory, shared storage. Uh, now let's move to the integration uh, with, via, via uh, web services or uh, also the user interface. Uh, so for these two, the HTTPS uh, port is used, and uh, to access it, in, in case of the user interface, uh, there's no need to to use the master node because uh, both because the graphical user interface of both nodes is uh, accessible all the time. You can see that I have the first node and here the second node, and both showing the same data, same basically graphical user interface. Uh, but in the case of uh, web services, you can actually also send it to, to any uh, of the nodes and it will, it will be processed successfully. But uh, if you want to 
send it only to the master or or specific specific uh, but you can use some some old balancer to uh, change the change the nodes or some uh, virtual IP address uh, should be yes yes like <clears throat> There are two options. Uh, you can either use a load balancer to use a single IP address for communication uh, with the EDX toolbox or a CP endpoint, or uh, you can use multiple IP addresses when addressing uh, your uh, toolbox and ECP and web service. But then if you will integrate via the web service, then you need to implement a logic which will check whether uh, the web service on uh, the specific IP address is available. And if not, then you will continue on the next available IP address uh, from the cluster. So this is the only purpose of the, of the load balancer in this case. Uh, maybe uh, we can take a look uh, at the chat. We have uh, one question there uh, regarding the SSL. Uh, from uh, uh, Peter Miller, uh, if uh, DB Connect support use SSL through parameter? Uh, I believe if you don't specify this parameter, the use SSL through will be used. Yeah, by default. Uh, yeah, by default. Uh, it's just in, in our case because uh, we are not using the SSL on our database server, so mm -hmm. therefore we are we are using this parameter. But uh, if you remove it, like like it is just then, then it will be used by, by the yeah, So this is like supported. This is not the application thing, but this is more about your database setup. If the SSL is configured on your database side, then uh, you can use it in this uh, connection string or a remote distribution SSL false parameter, which is the uh, in the installation guide and in the examples. Yeah, uh, I think uh, within the documentation, we are mentioning just just these two parameters that, that are uh, required, so okay. auto reconnect and and the character encoding and the rest is is, is optional. Okay. So uh, yeah, so uh, web services. So let's uh, <coughs> let's send a message uh, via via web service. Uh, unfortunately, there is nothing uh, such as a failover, so we would need to send it directly to the one of the nodes. So, in this case, uh, the first one, for example, and send it on on ECP endpoint. Yeah. I can uh, change the code, so send it from Tiger to Cheetah. Send it, and here you can see the message ID. So the message was successfully sent. Uh, we can check the graphical user interface and of the second node. So here you can also see that they, are, they have the same data because it was sent from the first node, and you can check it on the second one. So the message was sent, received. We can check it also on the receiver endpoint. And here you can see that the message is displayed as a receipt as here as well. Uh, but right now we can try to send the message uh, from the toolbox as well. We can uh, via the send message request. Uh, also, uh, uh, important things mentioned, uh, I've added the security header here. so. Well, it's due to the authentication. So we have enabled uh, web service authentication. We can send it and yeah, the message was again sent. And also also received. So on the receiver side. Uh, so 
this will be probably everything for web services. And, yeah. and if you have any questions regarding this, you can, you can ask now. Or if you if you want to see some some more configuration something. Nothing something in the chat. To me. So then we can move to the next slide, which is <laughs> actually the last one. So uh, if you have no, no other questions, uh, I would like to thank you for your uh, attention and participation. And we will really everything from from outside. Yeah. Uh, if nobody has any questions for the moment, uh, then we can close this call. Uh, reminding all of you that uh, the link is shared in the chat. Uh, Anna has shared the link uh, to the YouTube page, uh, so you can find more from uh, like this session record and the other sessions as well. Uh, on YouTube, uh, um, so ba basically that's it mm -hmm. for today. So yeah, thank you all for participating. Thank you all, all our, our colleagues from from Unicorn uh, for the presentation. Thanks a lot. I wish you all a very good rest of the day. Yeah, thank you. Thank you as well. And have a great day. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. I'll see you. Bye.